uh, I haven't heard WFAA in forever. I'm from Dallas. And that was like, oh, that was a blast from the past. Hopefully it was good memories. I grew up watching WFAA. How about you? Sure. Now I'm like trying to think. I'm like, I have to like go back through it. But you know, you watch the news that your parents are watching or whatever's on, but like those call letters. Uh, and I just did an interview with someone that used to be on Kiz FM. And I was like, oh, nostalgia. So nice. <laughs> Oh, it's, you know, let's go down memory lane a little bit. Your very first special was actually shot right down the road at Lakewood Theater. Five yeah. specials later, now you have your own series. Is it fair for me to ask which one you prefer more? Is it like asking your favorite kid? It's like apples and oranges, or you could hate both of your kids. I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, I. Uh, they both are serve different purposes, and it's a different muscle. You know, stand-up is all about telling and sketch is all about showing. So you get to do all these characters and work with an ensemble and visually convey your point and stand up is just, you just live by the merit of your words. So I really respect uh, and love both art forms. Uh, sketch was definitely my first love though. Now I really appreciate how you took us through each character in your series. Cause as I was watching, I thought, wait a minute, this is how I actually do my Netflix experience. I kind of taste a few things, go through all the different genres. Is that what inspired you to introduce each character to us? Um, the characters, you know, we, I, the writer's room that I ran, it's very like all, no ideas are bad ideas. And I believe good sketch is rooted in unique characters. Um, and so the characters are inspired by conversation, situations, feelings, just weirdness. Cashew Albacore, for example, is just something I came up with. It was just a voice I had. And I was like, I bet this guy looks like this. So that's the exercise is taking all of your emotions and putting a face to them. Um, and a lot of times, you know, for a lot of the female characters, they represent types of women we've seen uh, that oh, maybe yeah. have annoyed us or just give us the creeps or something. And so, you know, there's no wrong way to do a character. And uh, this is just an example of some of the weird women that live in my mind. There was one I want to talk to you about, though. It was it was like an, an AA meeting, but it was mm -hmm. for confident women. Girls are not funny. Girls aren't funny. They never will be funny. And yeah. watching that, I was like, my gosh. I mean, the way that you were, you are basically, you're sending like a really great message there, but in a very backwards way. What was the intent yeah. behind that? You know, that uh, my stand-up is imbued with that type of messaging. And my book, Girl Logic, really touches on this idea that uh, for women, you know, we're constantly beaten over the head and told to buy products that uh, tout the message of like, you know, you are perfection, you can do it, be confident, be bold. But when you actually exhibit those qualities, people are just as angry as you as they were from when, when you were insecure. You know, it is uh, a difficult thing to walk that line. So I wanted to kind of bring light to that. Um, this idea that if you are this confident woman who does hold her head high, it really is going to upset a lot of people. So of course the lesson at the end of the day is do whatever you want and people can just deal with it. Uh, but we're very proud of that one in particular because of the message. I'm very, I was very proud of that one too. I can't wait Thank to, you. Uh, to share that with everyone. I'm like, yeah, listen, listen to Eliza, what she has to say. <laughs> you know, this is very uncertain times right now, you know, even doing this junket the way we are behind the camera my apartment's a mess and I can't believe I'm talking to you in it right now. But, but laughter is always a great way to, to deal with stress, to deal with anxiety and what a perfect time for the series to be released. I bet you didn't know that this timing would be so perfect. April 1st was always the date to be released. So fortunately for us, people are at home in my perfect world. This would be coming out just like a normal show and people would watch it on the weekends. So, but I am glad that we are able to offer people something that is bingeable and fun and they can use as escapism uh, during this really weird, unprecedented trying time. Your roots are here in North Texas. Mm -hmm. Everybody's dealing with not knowing what the next, I mean, things are changing every day. Is there anything that you want to share with maybe some of your family that's here, some of your, your old uh, comedy roots here in town? It's just something uplifting. Um, you know, I think perspective is key. I know my dad and my stepmom live in Dallas and you know, it's Dallas. So everybody's got a yard and a pool and a lot of distance between their neighbors. My heart goes out to people in other circumstances or in cities that are more condensed like New York, you know, and they can't escape from that. So perspective is key. And we're gonna get through this because at the end of the day, we're Americans and we don't give up. That's so true. Can that be your next sketch? America. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, it'll it'll piss off, you know, you're gonna piss off half the people anyway, but I'm very proud to be an American. I'm very proud to be a Texan and fortitude will get us through this.